So Fano, we know that addressing family violence and sexual violence will make a big difference to wellbeing and to our youngest citizens. So let's hear next from the Honourable Marama Davidson, Minister for the Prevention of Family Violence and Sexual Violence. Just a reminder that after this session, we will also take questions. So feel free to use the chat function on the virtual platform at any stage to submit these. Marama is of Ngāpuhi, Te Rarawa and Ngāti Poro descent. Prior to becoming an MP, Marama worked for the Human Rights Commission for 10 years and was the chief panellist for the Glen Inquiry into Domestic Violence and Child Abuse. Tēnā koe, Minister Davidson. Nō te wā. Tēnā koe, Nina Kei, taku hoa. E mihi ana ki te rangi, e mihi ana ki te whenua, e mihi ana ki ngā maunga. Me ngā wai horapa nei o e nei whenua katoa o koutou. Kei aku iti, kei aku rahi, kei aku whakataitei. Nei ko te mihi kia koutou e mana wanui ana ki tēnei kaupapa, o te rā ki tēnei mahi. Mai kore aku koutou, me a koutou mahi, e kore ngā wawata o tēnei kaupapa e tutuki. E tika ana te whakatauki, he tupuna, he mokopuna, māwai e whakaki i ngā whāwharua o ngā mātua tupuna. Mā e tātou mokopuna. He mokopuna, he tupuna. A kia ora tātou katoa. Kia ora Nina Kei um, for introducing me. It's beautiful to see you e hoa. Um, very honoured um, to have yourself and Charles helping to lead our day. Um, I'm pretty stoked to be among you all. And as Emma said this morning, over 900 registrations for this online hui. So for that, I did have to start absolutely by offering my thanks to everyone who has been involved in organizing these two very big days together, um, our speakers, the experts who have worked with us to ensure this hui is also a safe environment for all people impacted by violence. I know that uh, no matter where you're from today and where you are, uh, we are all here in pursuit of helping our people, our whānau, communities, our families, our rohe and our communities step from darkness into the light. So here we all are trying to work towards our vision to eliminate family violence and sexual violence. Um, we know that people today are here with us from the far north and the deep south. We have uh, iwi, uh, leaders, tangata whenua, church leaders, Pacifica people, a range of ethnic communities, disabled people, rainbow communities. We have policy makers, practitioners from our communities, whānau, parents, grandparents, and you are all people who serve with compassion, dedication, empathy, awareness, and of course, aroha. Uh, many of you were part of the engagement to develop Te Aurere Kura. So it's great to see you here in support of this next step for the strategy. Um, we have to ensure and value that your expertise and your determination to work with us is centred and honoured to improve wellbeing. Ngā mihi nui, kia koutou katoa. <clears throat> it is and has always been your dedication, your focus, on kotahitanga, your preparedness to bring the principles and the practice of tika and pono and kaitiakitanga, um, those values that bring us together to share and improve how we help people on their path to well-being, how systems need to be accountable. For all of that mahi, for your time and energy over the next two days, I sincerely thank us all. Um, this hui, today inaugural and annual hui, marks a massive milestone in our nation's first comprehensive and long-term strategy to eliminate family violence and sexual violence. Developed with and owned by the collective of government, 
tangata whenua, specialist sectors and our diverse communities of Aotearoa, the strategy belongs to all of us. I was reflecting on Russell's beautiful kōrero in the videos this morning about that false arbitrary lying between government and communities. And I do want to acknowledge, for example, many of our staff and kaimahi across government sector, all, of course, absolutely, as we all are, are from our communities and what I want and have a vision and can start to see pockets of it is when our government officials are the biggest advocates for our communities because they are from our communities. We share that bold vision together, our moi moi are, that all people in Aotearoa are thriving, well-being is enhanced and sustained because people are safe and supported to live free from family violence and sexual violence. And being here today demonstrates that collective commitment to building and sustaining those relationships in pursuit of this moi moi are. And it was beautiful, stunning scene setting from Brad Tōterewa um, uh, and setting up those and Poata and Whaiahira talking about the nature of the relationships that are going to be the only way that we can do this work. Those strong and enduring relationships that will be essential for those necessary shifts that are outlined in Te Aurerekura, how we work, how we are accountable, how we provide support, um, so that we are able to properly prevent and properly address violence and healing for all of those, for all of us who are impacted. Uh, I love that Whaiahira brought Matariki right back to us this morning. We are the first nation in the world to see the light each day, yet our policies and systems have left many people living in the dark. The harm that has spread mamai across generations. And Emma, I mihi to you and thank you for directly acknowledging that our systems have far too often caused not just further harm, but intergenerational harm that has never, ever been acceptable. Te Aurere Kura, the national strategy to eliminate family violence and sexual violence, enabled by Te Puna Aonui and all of our tangata whenua sector community partners, is about ensuring systems do not cause harm and about properly supporting people into the light. And Brad, uh, with much generosity, setting out that thousand years of matauranga and whakapapa in those few minutes in such a stunning way to emphasize um, the journey uh, with care, love and enlightenment. Uh, and that it is at the minimum a 25 year strategy focused on that intergenerational change. Sitting alongside that strategy, you've heard Emma talk about the first two year action plan, which lays out the priorities for the next two years. And while we are in just the first seven months of this 25 year strategy, um, it is important what we have been able to achieve already in pursuit of that moi moi ya, because we have to be able to show that we are committed to this mahi. Now, I want to be transparent and honest always about the progress for Te Aurerekura and the gaps. We know we don't have all of the answers or even all of the pathways yet, but we do have a solid framework for our collective action. And by working constructively together, we can get things right because it was a framework that has come from us collectively together. And this hui is, of course, that opportunity for us to have a bit of a collective assessment of how we're going. So uh, as uh, our MCs and Emma have outlined, the next two days are about some of the foundation stones that we are laying in support of a new approach. Uh, you heard Fuata talk about doing things differently uh, and that it won't always work because we haven't tried the new approaches yet in a scaled up collective and enduring way. And so sustainable arrangements for that community participation, those more intentional approaches, purposeful approaches to joint working across government through Te Puna Aonui, planning better, more strategically about how we make investments and establishing 
the Tangata Whenua Ministerial Advisory Group are part of those foundation stones. It's in these early stages of Te Aurere Kura that it is vital that we develop effective ways of working together, listening and learning and evaluating what is and isn't working so we can correct course if needed. And I know we're already hearing that feedback and remembering to think always of the big picture, the long goal of doing this work together while picking up the specific focus that we need in particular areas of this mahi. Uh, and Te Aurere Kura provides us with that unprecedented opportunity um, to work effectively together. That leadership and accountability uh, is central to Te Aurere Kura to getting this work done. And here I am both very scared and very excited to be in this pinnacle role uh, of trying to put down a really strong platform to see us over 25 years. So let's just very quickly, I think it's important to talk about some of the progress um, to date. Budget, I of course announced budget 22 investment of $114.52 uh, million over four years in primary prevention, the community led and integrated responses and improved workforce capability to strengthen community approaches to prevent and respond to family violence and sexual violence. So this year's family violence and sexual violence budget package then takes us to almost $1 billion invested since 2018. That has been the, the biggest bulk funding over those years that we've ever seen in the sector and to start to address the chronic underfunding across the system that has been apparent for decades. The ongoing investment uh, that the government is making in family violence and sexual violence systems recognises that sustained effort and investment are required to eliminate violence, that those investment decisions must be underpinned by a strategic investment plan over the 25 years that is able to learn and respond from where we need to go. So we know that no one budget is ever going to be the answer. But we need to have that long view as we realise, yep, it will take time and we will pick up the gaps along those ways. Um, we can already see that it's not going to be easy and it shouldn't be because we are challenging deeply entrenched systems here and the systemic change must happen and that absolutely is challenging the status quo. That's never easy. Last Thursday, I was very honoured to welcome the newly appointed Tangata Whenua Ministerial Advisory Group to Parliament. And during the formation of the strategy, Tangata Whenua were very, very clear in their request that government establish an enduring mechanism to foster an effective mana kite mana Māori Crown relationship. So that group will provide me as minister with independent advice to build in tangata whenua leadership at the governance level. And this is a vital step in the implementation of our mahi of the national strategy, recognizing the disproportionate violence and impact on tangata whenua, and that as both, I believe, Firehera, Brad and uh, Puata said, that will also deliver good change for all people. Moving from darkness into the light means that we must move away from privileging one form of knowledge over others. That has been part of what colonization has interrupted uh, from us all, not just from Māori, and embedding kaupapa Māori approaches, mātauranga Māori, te ao Māori solutions are why I'm proud that this has a heavy em emphasis, our work, on the benefit of our Te Ao Māori solutions for all. So I'm so looking forward to working with and receiving advice from and being held to account uh, by the experts who make up the Tangata Whenua Ministerial Advisory Group. And I know uh, you're all going to meet them uh, collectively today and in another session. Um, I just quickly want to uh, acknowledge the work of Kaitiaki Ropu, a group of five leading practitioners from family violence and sexual violence sectors, and the appointment independent process that they were affirmed to lead. We know it's not just what we do, but it's how we do things. 
and the independence of Kaitiaki Rōpū um, to lead the nominations process for Tangata Whenua was of um, deep importance to me. You're also going to hear about the workforce capability frameworks and in May this year we launched the family violence workforce and organisational capability frameworks to guide and support people to properly understand all forms of family violence. So making sure that people understand the knowledge they need to provide the right response, to refer to the right people and places. And we know that many of our frontline workers, whether it's teachers, caseworkers, doctors, community workers, are being asked to do this every day, not necessarily with the knowledge and expertise. We must equip people with the right tools uh, that needs to go across all of our workforce, especially when we work alongside victims and survivors. We hear them, we believe them, we respect them. We are sensitive to safety. Uh, we are aware of the distinct needs that people have and can help them and connect them to the right support. These frameworks are for all of us. They're for ministers. They're for all of us to be able to improve our awareness, our understanding, our knowledge and our practice developed through the sustained focus of experts from the specialist family violence sector, including specialist tangata whenua leaders, representatives of victim survivors, people from diverse communities and people from government committed to enabling and sustaining change. I just wanted to acknowledge I've got them here in front of me and I think Vaya Hira picked up on um, the acknowledgement of the framework and indigenous indigeneity framework that is necessary and I'll read for example the acknowledgement that an indigeneity framework highlights the impacts of colonization and institutional racism as significant contributors to the intergenerational transmission of trauma and therefore that is what holds the solutions to healing preventing responding uh, you're going to hear more about those frameworks in shift three session later uh, I just really want to finish uh, my all with acknowledging Te Puna Aonui and that at the start of this month, we finally formalised um, the joint way of working across government and Tangata Whenua again generously gifted us this name Te Puna Aonui and it also holds us to account. Uh, it is a beautiful name that references the star Aonui and moving into the light Maramatanga, of course led by Emma Powell bringing government agencies uh, together uh, to align whole of government strategy, policy and investment to eliminate family violence and sexual violence. This is moving us away from the siloed approaches. We know we've got a lot of work to do there on the ground um, and for joint collective accountability also. Uh, so learning how to work differently across those spaces uh, is helped by pulling together officially um, te, te puna aonui. Look, I'm going to finish off here. Um, we know what we are up against. You, many of you have known this for far longer than I have. We are putting in place uh, the accountability, the platforms for that change. We are also learning and working out how this mahi will evolve, but we have got a long-term commitment for our people, for our families and community to do this mahi. Uh, I wanted to quickly mention that there are other ministers online at various times throughout the corridor. You've of course got the ministerial panel tomorrow. Uh, we're a sitting week here. I will be um, needing to take leave during things like question time, but I'm going to ensure that I catch up on those few, very few sessions that I do have to miss. Of course, these are being recorded also for later catch up, but I've got all my team's officials here to keep me connected to the small parts of the program that I do end up having to miss uh, at this time. Um, I want to end here uh, again with your thanks, and I know that we are about to enter into our questions and ongoing corridor. Nō reira, ka pō, ka pō, ka ao, ka awatea, ti hei mauri ora ki te whaiao, ti hei mauri ora ki te ao mārana, te nā koutou, te nā koutou. Kia ora mai tato katoa. Back to you, I believe, Nina Kay. Te hei mauri ora. I am tino pai te pakarongo ki ngō kōrero, Minister Davidson, 
Um, wonderful to see you as well. So thank you for that mihi to, to myself and Charles at the beginning and just to mihi back to you. I'm sure not, I'm not the only one who feels a sense of both uh, gratitude and pride that you are in this position. Um, we've actually had a number of Pātai come in for you, Marama, so I will, we'll, we'll get straight into it because we are due to uh, break at quarter to 11. Uh, so the first Pātai we have is, will you move to high trust funding contracts for community services like the government did during COVID? Short answer is yes, that is the aspiration. Uh, there's a particular piece of work that some of you are also involved in called the, it's called the Social Sector Commissioning Work. But essentially, Te Kura depends on that. Um, the integrated community responses is one of the ways around the regions that we want to properly start modelling that. But I'm very clear that that is exactly what needs to happen. The communities have been telling me every meeting, every hui I go to, that is absolutely the commitment and the aspiration. I also know that our systems are clunky and are not honouring that approach right this moment. So um, continue to keep us to account. That is what I know we have to work towards. Tēnā koe. Um... Pātai Tuarua, how will the needs of people abused in state care or faith-based organisations be addressed through Te Aorere Kura? Kia ora, and that has been raised to me directly, and I want to, Mihi, I've been able to be at um, some of the hearings, particularly recently, uh, as well as people are all able to catch them online as well, if you're not able to physically be at those hearings. That is very, that is one of the key if we're talking about system accountability, we absolutely must prioritise those voices. That has been raised to me as a particular gap. So there are many opportunities that we can ensure that we are centering ex those that leadership experiences, voices and insights. I have already asked my office and to speak with Emma and the team to work out with those particular state and uh, religious institution survivors to make sure that you are included and in leading, particularly in the system accountability work. So recognize uh, that people feel that gap right now and want to honor and pick that up properly. Thank you. Um, are victims and survivors involved in this mahi and informing what you do? Yes, uh, since not just the creation of Te Aorere Kura, but I know over years, of the attempts of uh, community and government working together. Um, victim, survivor informed and led approaches is again going to be the only way that we can sort this out, the accountability, but also what works for responding for healing and restoration. Do want to acknowledge Dr. Kim McGregor um, in her role as Chief Victims Advisor and the many sectors uh, organizations and groups who have been keeping us to account, keeping our ears pinned to um, victim-led survivor approaches. I'm very, very cautious, uh, conscious that that is absolutely what, what must be leading this work as well. Um, have you considered using citizens, juries or assemblies for engagement? That's a uh, I'm really looking for, we're all looking together. Uh, that's an important question because many communities and have also said they're not always equipped to engage when and how we need it as government. So I think Emma's already referred to where one of the biggest priority work, work streams at the moment is trying to figure out how how do we uh, work with communities in a way that also doesn't further add burden to the stress that communities and the sector are already under? I'm really open to those ideas. I've seen really good uh, evidence and practice here and around the world internationally where those models offer us really good models. Um, the Mateke Mai Constitutional Transformation work that has was led by uh, Margaret Mutu and of course um, the past Dr Mwana Jackson is an example of some beautiful um, ways of engaging with people and I want us to figure out how to do that better. Ka pai. 
kanu ite mahiki a kui ano Minister Davidson Marama Ekare. Um, thank you so much for your time this morning. We know, like you said, you will be with us for the majority of the hui, and I know that you are coming back to close the day for us later as well, and also for our pōpō, and what an honour it is to have you with us. feel like we're in good hands with you.